here. What's your definition of enlightenment? Well, I would say there's two elements to it. One is that you're truly working to make things better. And you, you can start with your own presumption about what better would be. But I mean better. And, and part of that would be that you're trying to decrease unnecessary suffering. That's not all there is to it. But if you need a, an anchor point, that's a good one. You should try to decrease unnecessary suffering. You should tell the truth. Those are the two, the two fundamental elements, I think, is that you're oriented towards the good and that you continue to improve that orientation because you understand that your definition of good is insufficient, so it has to transform. But at the same time, you, you try to speak the truth. And so the truth issue is an interesting one. And, and, and this is, I think, the proper way to understand faith, because faith doesn't mean believing a bunch of things you know not to be true. That's stupidity. That's not faith. So here's, here's a way of thinking about it. So imagine that when you're talking to someone, you want something from them. You want their recognition. You want to dominate the conversation. You want to stand out. But there's an aim. There's a goal. You're, you're treating the person and the conversation like a means to an end. And maybe you do that with your speech all the time. You're always using it as a tool to obtain some end. You see this, probably the extreme of this is the pickup artist community, right? Mm -hmm. So their whole scheme is how to craft their words in a manipulative manner. It's all acting, right? How to present yourself as a dominant male so that you can attract sexual partners. It isn't how to be a good man so you can attract women. It's how to present yourself falsely. I'm satirizing it to some degree because the community is useful insofar as it gets men to stop being afraid of women. But forget about that for a minute. So that's the use of speech instrumentally. That's one way of thinking about it. But here's another way of using speech. You try to say what you think as clearly as you can, period. And then you let whatever happen, happen. And the faith there, here's the faith idea there, is that whatever happens if you tell the truth is the best thing that could have possibly happened. It's a presumption, and you have to make presumptions to move forward in life. And so you think, well, if being is good, then a truthful relationship with it is the proper relationship. And you, you might say, well, how do you know that the outcome is going to be good? It's like, you never know if the outcome is going to be good. That's the problem. You never know. So you have to assume. And so there is a deep idea. I think it's a core religious idea. It's certainly extraordinarily well-developed in Christianity that your fundamental moral obligation is to tell the truth, period. Now, that doesn't mean, you know, people say, well, you know, what about truths that hurt people's feelings? It's like, you're not supposed to be stupid when you tell the truth. You're supposed to be wise. And so, for example, this is a funny little anecdote, I suppose, to illustrate the point. So you're out clothing shopping with your girlfriend or your wife, and she says, does this dress make me look fat? Well, what's the answer? You say, well, no. Well, maybe that's a white lie. And maybe it isn't, but maybe it is. That isn't what you say. You say, I don't answer questions like that. That's the truth in that situation, right? Because a white lie, a white lie is obviously there are levels of seriousness to, to being deceitful. And sometimes you tell a white lie because you can't come up with a truth that isn't more harmful. But it's still not right. It's not optimal. There's a truth there that you could tell if you could get it right. And you don't just like bang out your stupid observations casually just because they happen to be accurate in that microcosmic moment, you know. You have to be sophisticated when you tell the truth, which is partly why you need to be oriented towards the good in a fundamental way. And you have to shake off your resentment of being in order to be oriented towards the good. And that's very hard because being makes people suffer. And so everyone's angry about that. And if you're angry, you can't be oriented towards the good because you're out for destruction. 